Hey guys, this is Anna. So, today we're going to talk about the OMAD diet. What is OMAD? OMAD stands for one meal a day. Pretty simple, but it's not easy. You only get to eat once a day, which means you're eating all of your calories in one meal. That is really difficult to do. Now, there is not many instances in my life where I've eaten 1800 calories in one go. I don't eat quick. I mean, I eat kind of quick but I don't eat that quick. So for me, the way to do OMAD is to do a one to two hours of eating for that one particular meal because there's no way I would be able to finish up to 2000 calories in half an hour. It is just not happening. So if you're planning to do OMAD in your 30 minute break at work or at school, think again. It's really not advised. Unless you're Will Tennyson, he eats so fast. Putting Will aside, he is a bizarre creature. We're gonna talk about normal people on OMAD. Do I recommend this diet? It's incredibly difficult to do, but I think over time it does work. I do find that the more you do it, the easier it gets. If you're only planning to do this as a short-term diet, it's gonna be extremely hard and I don't recommend you do it. Things like binging, from my own experience of course, you have no guilt essentially because you can eat whatever you want on the OMAD diet. There's no restrictions unless you are doing keto or vegan. Then you've got your own specific requirements and that's different. Mainly for OMAD, you can eat whatever you want, which means if you're going 22 hours without eating and all you've been thinking about is food, chances are you're going to get your phone out, you're going to order Uber Eats, or you're going to drive down the road and get Krispy Kreme and you're going to have a big pizza or something. So. Be very careful with OMAD because there are chances that you could develop an eating disorder. Get into things like binge eating. I have experienced this myself. I do have a fairly good amount of self-control, but man, there were times where I would just, I couldn't help it. I got so hungry that I just went on Uber Eats and normally if I got something like fast food, right, I would just get a burger, a normal meal, like fries and a drink. But if you've, you know, deprived yourself of something for a while, you go, nope, I need to have three burgers, I need to have two large chips, two drinks. Like you're basically eating for two people. Don't do that, it's really not a good idea. You will feel like absolute crap after because you're consuming high sugary foods, high fat, it'll be super greasy and you'll just not feel good. Mentally as well, you'll just be really disappointed in yourself. You came this far and then what did you do? You went and ate junk food. Now, that's not to say that you can't do this occasionally, but the problem is, is that you can develop bad habits in the pursuit of developing good ones, of course. So be careful with that. I would say that's the biggest problem for me is the act of binging or even like not preparing for OMAD. I think if you're gonna do OMAD, you really need to think about what kind of foods you wanna be eating and make sure that you either prep in advance or account for the time it takes not only to make the food, but to eat it because it takes a lot of time to eat thousands of calories, especially if you're a male and you're trying to eat two to 3000 calories, that's a lot. Prep in advance if it's something you're wanting to do long term. Think about meals ahead of time and plan for them. That will be the key to your success doing OMAD and also picking a schedule that is suitable for you. For me personally, I like eating between the hours of 2 and 5 p.m. Specifically, I like to eat between 3 and 4. But it just depends. On the day, I might eat a little bit earlier and sometimes I might eat a little bit later. It really depends on the day, how much energy I've been expending. Am I super busy that day? Have I drank enough water? If I've drank enough water, typically I'll be hungry later in the day because water keeps me satiated pretty well. There are a few other things you can do to keep hunger at bay. Sparkling water is a really good one. Black tea or black coffee is fine because they're zero calorie drinks. Also green tea. I like drinking tea occasionally. I do prefer to do tea on alternate day fasting and I do that instead of OMAD, which it is an even more aggressive form of intermittent fasting because you're going an entire day without eating. I will make a separate video for alternate day fasting. Maybe try mastering 12 hours, then do 16. Maybe 18 will be, you know, the cutoff point. That's still a lot. That's 18 hours of fasting and six hours of eating. For me, I would usually eat around three or four o'clock. I just eat one meal. Usually it'd be like either a steak or a beef burger patty with some type of salad, usually spinach, carrot, cucumber, cherry tomatoes. I've been eating pickled radish because I grow radishes in my garden. I have rice or potato to like bulk up the meal. You don't have to do that depending on what diet you follow. 
I'm kind of following along the lines of the vertical diet, which I will make a separate video for. Subscribe to find out about that diet because I really enjoy it. But we'll leave that for later. So for OMAD, I actually do really like it. If you prepare in advance, you make sure you've got fats and proteins in your meal, you'll stay fuller for longer. It means I don't get late night cravings, which I would normally get. I am one of those night eaters. I like to binge at night time, but I can go during the day without eating. Like some days I really want to eat at like 8 p.m. It just depends. Everybody is so different when it comes to diet and exercise and what kind of results you get. So just bear in mind that my results won't necessarily reflect what you get. You might do way better than me and maybe you'll be a bit slower. It just depends. So don't feel disheartened if you've done this and you don't get exactly the same results as me. It's better to do it slower and get the results long term than it is to do it short term and have really crappy results. You know, like what's the point of that? I think the key is, is just consistency, planning ahead of time, knowing what you're going to eat because there's nothing worse than being on OMAD and then you're like, oh my god, it's five o'clock in the afternoon. I haven't eaten all day. I haven't eaten since five o'clock yesterday. I haven't prepared. Like I don't have my meal ready. I'm starving. Like I'm really hungry. I'm just going to go drive and get McDonald's. So just make sure you prepare because that will ensure that you know exactly what time that you need to eat. You will know exactly what's on offer and you're more likely to stick to that if it's prepped or you've allowed time to prep for it. So that's pretty much what I have to say about OMAD. For me personally, I lost just over two kilos in a week. I wouldn't say necessarily that OMAD is the best diet. Everyone's different. Try it yourself to see what results you have. For me, two kilos down and I think I did pretty well. Two kilos is still a lot of weight in seven days and don't feel like you need to race yourself to lose 10 kilos in the shortest amount of time possible. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed. Also, subscribe to my channel for future videos. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, share, and comment down below. Let me know if you have any specific video requests, and I try to reply to as many comments as possible. Thanks guys, see you next time. Bye.